He is the one and only one of the greatest of all time, John Cavanaugh. Wow. How are you, sir? Far too Great kind. to see you. Far too kind wow. Always. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, it's so lovely to see you. It's been a minute. It's it has been a minute. minute. Yes, it has been a minute. What a studio. Wow. You've never been to this one. Never been to this oh, one. you were at the other one. Giant, but uh Welcome. Absolutely beautiful. And in that back room there, it's like NASA, all these screens. With the control room the stuff. Yes, great, yes, yes. So. We have your well guy done. right up here. Like you that. remember that in Sweden? I do. That was a big one. 11 years ago, all kinds of tchotchkes here. How long have you been in this? Uh, so 2017, we moved here. But then I, I left to go work at ESPN, as you may recall. Right. And then That's when right. I wanted to come back in 2021, I asked them, do you still have my great set? And they were just about to throw it out. No way. But here it is. This Meant is it. Be. Man. We we actually moved in right before Mayweather McGregor, so to give you okay. some, uh, Here we go. it's been a long Good time. Context, yeah. Um, thank Very you so cool. much. I know you're headed home. Literally on the way to the airport. So that your wife's birthday home. yesterday. Yes. Oh my gosh. The beautiful Orla. Orla, she's very Sorry. kind to let you uh, go away well, on her we, birthday. We realized we've since we got married. We got married in December. Then I, it was my birthday in January, and I was away with um, in Brazil with Walker. Now it's her birthday in November. I'm away. In New York, so we haven't spent that together. And now this January, for my birthday, I'll be away oh, in gosh. Toronto. Oh, right. With uh, Brad. Okay. And the week before that in Vegas with Walker. Does it ever um, get tiring, all this traveling? Very. Okay. Have I'm you reached a point? Lie. This year has been particularly heavy. Okay. And um, Why this year? I don't know. It just seemed to be just one fight after another. And then there's other things going on with, uh, with Train Alta and stuff like that. So it just felt, you, know, you just get home, you repack the bag. And then my son is at the turning tree and he's starting to recognize it a lot more now. And like I walk towards the door and he's like, are you going to work? Yeah. He, he says work when I'm going away or, or to the gym to fight the boys. Uh, to fight the boys? Uh, that's just going to the gym. That's amazing. But if, I, but if he sees a suitcase, he knows I'm away for a few days. He's starting to act up a little bit when I go away. You know, he's sad to see me go, um, you know, being apart from Orla and she's pregnant again. So um, congratulations. Yeah, it's been a uh, thank you. It's been um, it's been a heavy year. It's so. very hard when the kids start to grow up and and you start to miss things yes. and they have activities and things yes. like that. I'm sure you love the job, love the gig. Yeah. But this is a, a this is a tough job because you're always away on the weekend. It's yes. not like a Monday through Friday thing. It's a Tuesday through Sunday thing, right? Yes. And then yeah. it's right back on the you know on the horse come whenever you have to get back. So yeah, I'm lucky. I have like the the other guy that runs the team with me, Dave Roach. He's becoming more and more involved. And like for example. I would have normally been going straight from here. I've got Lucy fighting next Saturday in Vegas, mm -hmm. whereas I can go home because Dave will go with her. Uh, with her. Okay. So he is definitely had to take a, a large chunk of the of the workload off. So it's um, but hey, look, you know, don't want to be complaining. Either. Sure, sure, no, 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 no of course. Team, they're all doing well. You know, we're on, we're on the shows and and hey, who knows what's going to happen now with Bellator? I definitely had the lion's share of my team on Bellator, so. Maybe next year I'll have a lot more free time. That is true. <laughs> and I want to ask that. you about that uh, in a moment, <clears throat> uh, PFL and all that stuff. But, uh, and crazy, the, the last Bellator event might actually be this Friday. Yes. Uh, as crazy as that sound. When, 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 when you told me you were going to be here, I was like, who do you have? I looked at the lineup because I didn't want to send, I didn't want to insult you. I'm like, I don't see any guys of yours. You didn't actually come to corner someone. No, this was a, an unusual trip, um, you know, with, uh, with Monster and Hans and the guys. And they did this crazy contest. It was like 400 global winners. There was people flown in from South America, from around Europe, and then obviously from the States. And I was teaching on Thursday with Hendo, TJ Dillashaw, and then for me, yeah. Hoist Gracie. You know, I, I just was thinking about it. I was, doing a, uh, I was teaching an arm lock sequence with his son, Conry, great guy of Hoist watching me and him somewhat assisting teaching the arm lock I'm shown on the birthday of UFC, where this is the man that 30 years ago took that, you know, incredible risk, obviously paid off. And it was just one of those pinch me moments that I'm just like, wow, what an amazing journey this has been that for me, I, I guess I saw UFC one probably in 98. And of course, someone's saying there, oh, that guy there, you'll teach alongside yeah, him yeah, yeah. on the 30th, but you mean, yeah, whatever. Um, so yeah, well, it was an unusual one. I think that's my second UFC I've been at, just to watch. I've always, I've only ever gone when I'm cornered. Right. What was the first? Um, I just think I went to some random one. Okay. Um, it might have been like UFC 38, actually, in the Machine Freeman. That's, oh, wow. I don't think I've been to one since, unless I've been with a fighter. Sure, sure, sure. Um, 
But actually, it did give me goosebumps. I, I got the feel, because I, had the, I had the, certainly had the feel of a really big fight night. And, you know, you've got Trump and, and, and those guys walking in and obviously start. And it actually gave me a little bit of a feeling of what it must be like to be in the crowd for a, 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 yeah. you know, a McGregor fight. Because it, it was always his fights that seemed to ha you know, draw that crazy attention. And uh, normally I'm just, you know, you just focus on the job in hand. But for there, I could actually em embrace it and feel the energy of the crowd. And um, yeah, I had a great, a great night. Because uh, you associate being in these venues and arenas and, and, and the, the atmosphere with like tense fighting. Yes. Is it hard to just be a fan sitting there? Yes. I would imagine. Yes, it definitely is. And, and for the first one or two fights, you, you're, you're like, almost yes, like, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. semi-cornering. But uh, then I got into it and... Um, just said good night. I'm, I'm sat there next to Hoyce Gracie. You watched the whole card with Hoyce? Yeah. 30th anniversary show at MSG. Wild, wild is that? That must be wild. It, Are you it, asking it, his opinion on things? Yeah, or? of course. Oh my course. gosh. Getting advice and what was your thoughts when you walked in? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, just, that must be amazing. It's just, um, yeah, I have no words. Can I tell you something that bummed me out? Um, just because I love the history of the sport. Uh, and, and, and I like how other sports, in particular the NBA and Major League Baseball here in America, <clears throat> celebrate the history. I thought Hoist being there, I, I, I might have missed it. I didn't even see him mentioned on the broadcast, but again, I might have missed it. Yeah. So, so maybe it was at one point when I was in the bathroom or something, but like my initial idea was like, bring out the 30 best fighters in UFC history, oh, do yeah. a thing, you know, because that's what the NBA did for their 75th birthday. They brought out the living best 75 and they voted on them, like something to celebrate the history. And if you didn't know any better on Saturday, I kind of felt like it was sort of not mentioned that this was the 30th birthday of the UFC in a venue, in a city that had banned them for yeah. all these years. Like the symmetry and the symbolism was yeah. beautiful. And I just kind of felt like it came and went. Yeah. Do, do no, you know what I, I'm saying? I agree 100%. I, I ended up see, watching the Tyson Fury fight. I was actually in uh, Boston for that amazing. and I was yeah. watching it. And I, I thought they maybe went a little bit overboard yes, with yes, the pageantry. You yes. know, like there was a, seemed like an hour between the co-main event and, and yes. the main event. And there was a music concert and all this sort of stuff. But it, but it was somewhat of a, oh, so that's how you make a show. Right. You know, and I suppose, say something like the WWE, again, it's, it's about the show. It's about the entertainment value. And maybe for this one, there could have been a bit more of that rather than just kind of like fight, 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 fight. Right. Um, again, I might have missed it. Maybe it was something shown on the screen. I haven't watched it back. But I don't recall, um, you know, the, the, you know, for the celebrities. Right. The, the, so that didn't happen, right? I didn't. You see were right it. next I'm to him. Next yeah. Time. Okay. So okay. So I, I didn't see it. Um, He's in the building. The dude who won UFC one, not a mention. And I'm so embarrassed because I'm sitting there and like a fan will walk past and be like, Coach Gavin, wow, such a big fan, it's great to you. And I'm like, Yeah. He's right. And they're yeah. like, Oh hi. So oh my I'm like, gosh. You, hold on a second. So yes. You need to take out your phone on Google. Yes. <laughs> But, um, the, the, this goes to show that perhaps the newer generation isn't learning or being taught who these people are, who the founding fathers are. Yes. And that bums me out, like especially when some of these, the guys from like the rampages of the world, the guys who like when I was coming up and I feel like they're being forgotten about. Yeah. And that like this guy, Roy McDonald, how many yes. people even, like if Roy was in the crowd on Saturday, yeah. how many people, and, the, and this guy is from 2017, yeah. you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. he feels like a distant memory at this point. Very true. No, you're, it's what have you done for me lately? Right. This, sport. this is why I want an independent MMA Hall of Fame. This is like one of my big things. Hall of Fame where people can come and visit and they can learn about pancreas and pride and hook and shoot and, and all. You know what I mean? Like, That'd be great. This, 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 there needs to be I a place for this fan, guy to be inducted, is, is, you know? It, um, yeah. Is it a fan thing? Like, is it Chael Sonnen or one of those guys that, you know, describe MMA? It's, look, it's two guys having a fist fight in front of a drunk audience. That's, right. There's no martial arts here. There's no. Whereas maybe if you're if you're a basketball fan or you know in Europe fo soccer football fan, you really it becomes like part, being part of a tribe. You know if you're into Liverpool football team like my wife and my dad is, they'll tell you about the manager in 1890. Sure. You know, and their their last FA Cup season. Whereas in, in MMA, do the fans are most of them just there for a, a fight on a Saturday night, without massive amount of interest and where they came from or, or where they're going is it just but look at boxing i feel i feel like they love the <clears throat> the legends right true there is a boxing hall of fame in yeah no, that's, that's true that's a good point the sport is younger it's younger but there's still enough history now is it a TikTok yes, generation yes. That's, <laughs> well, you know, that is true yeah you know, my dad again if he was a muhammad ali fan he would 
he'd buy a book about him. Who, who reads a book these days? Right, especially about <laughs> MMA. You wrote one, but there's like there's not a ton of MMA books out there. Not coming a huge out. amount. Um, this is just one of my things. And then when I was thinking about Hoist being in there, I was like, wait a second, was he not even shown on the broadcast at all? Um, I didn't realize that it was Monster that brought him and not the UFC. I thought the UFC was bringing him out. Maybe. And I, I thought that was a great thing for, well, initially, you know, I, I used to meet Hoist quite a bit at the Bellator events. Yeah. They had him as an ambassador for Bellator and I thought that was great that they gave a tip of the hat. To, yes, yes. You know, the legend that is. Um, and then when I heard when Hans was on to me about coming out and do this event, you know, it was great to meet Henderson and TJ. But when he said that they're bringing Hoist Grace, I was like, one, that's just great to hear. Yes, yes. You know, that he's getting that recognition that's thoroughly deserved. Um, but of course, too, to be teaching alongside and all of that was all of that was fantastic. But yeah, I, I was really happy that he that he came along and man, he was into it. Like he's sitting there, he's watching the fights. He's you know, there was Amazing. there were some nice fights. Uh like obviously there was the Mackenzie Dern fight, you know, it didn't go our way, but there was I suppose interest for him in in a Brazilian aspect right. or the um I believe he's here today, isn't he? Diego, the yes, you know, yes, yes, yes. incredible submission um artist. Um so it was just kind of cool to be alongside him and for him to be you know, I don't think he would probably follow it all like right, no. these days. He's not going to, maybe not know all of right. everybody that's here. He's so busy with his jujitsu network. But um, yeah, great, great, great weekend. Uh, can I ask you about the light heavyweights? Because we were just talking about yes. them as you were uh, getting mic'd up. So I, I feel like, so Alex is the new champ, right? Alex Pereira. <clears throat> I feel like there could be a case to be made for like, hey, let's not keep this guy on the sidelines until Jamal Hill comes back because he's, uh, you know, nursing an Achilles injury, which could take a while, like at least a year, right? That's a pretty serious injury. And then you look at the rest of the division, and I don't think Izzy's coming back anytime soon and maybe not even to 205. And then there's your boy, Johnny, right? Mm -hmm. um, Johnny, I would say it's Johnny and Anthony Smith, but you would have to give Johnny the leg up over Anthony, right? Um, Anthony and Alex have a bit of a history. Do you think there's any chance... Johnny could be fighting for a belt. I know what happened in Abu Dhabi, and I want to get your thoughts on that uh, somewhat unceremonious, but it should have been a DQ win. I think we all agree on this. That's what I would like to have explained to me. I'm, I'm like, there's two, let's say there's two instances. One was the referee thing, uh, sorry, the, the doctor thing, and you can have a discussion about that. I wasn't that upset that the doctor called it, to be honest. I'm not a doctor. Maybe he saw something we didn't. That's one thing. And the other thing is it being called a no contest. I really don't understand right. that. How can that not be called... How can that be called an accidental foul? There is scrambles in MMA where you throw a kick and the hand goes down. Fair enough. This was very measured because the, the, the fighters know that position so well. They know what's happening when you take someone down. Johnny had to block him taking his back. He slowly works, breaks the grip, gets to one knee, knee in the head. Like it's that's not a, a scramble situation where it's accidental. That's very purposeful. Um, so I didn't, I didn't, I'd love to hear the argument. I don't know if that's purely the referee's decision or was, did he confer with the judges or, or however it works. And, um, you know, that referee, I consider him a friend. I know him 10 oh, odd really? years on the wow. scene. I haven't seen him since then, but I, I am looking forward to seeing him and getting his thoughts on it. That being said, um, you know, it went the way it went. It was a no contest rather than a DQ. But um, is it announced that the rematch is on? No. I might. Oh, okay. Well, there, there goes. There's the answer to my question. <laughs> Maybe that's the number one contender fight. I, I, I would imagine so. What's this I, I, rematch? January thirteenth. Is that true? Yes. Oh wow. Where is that? But I'm not sure. No, no. Vegas. No one's watching. No one's watching. Okay. Um, uh, Vegas. That's a quick turnaround. Yes. And we actually wanted to do it even earlier. There was talk of the card in, in China. Um, obviously, the December sixteen card is very stacked. So yeah, they wanted to do. A quick, Are you okay with that quick turnaround? Yeah, I, I felt this was just the right amount of time because we did have to take a couple of weeks off from, uh, you know, getting a bit rattled. The blasted, yeah. Full on yeah. the head at the end of the day. But I also liked it that we didn't have to, not that Johnny does go out of shape, he's, he kind of trains 12 months of the year, but we had peaked so well. So to take a couple of weeks off and then only have a couple of weeks to peak again, um, I liked the timing of it. Um, so yeah, January 13th, we'll do that rematch. And then I think that sets us up if, if we get the win. Whoever gets to win, I think it sets them up for for maybe a title shot. You know? Yes. So we'll we'll see what happens. I guess it's a bit messy with um, you know you have, you have Jamal there, obviously. Um, so yeah, it's going to no be no more messy than the heavyweight division with John Jones <clears throat> and you know Interim True. and Stipe and True. all that stuff. Okay, so that is good to hear. I'm curious about Johnny because I know he was a bit of a nomad, and then he finds he finds love in Ireland and yes. he finds a home in Ireland. Yes. Initially, were you kind of like? 
I don't know if this guy's going to mesh on the team. You know, his character, you know, his, his personality is a bit colorful, right, to say the least. Like, like that, that doesn't – he's a lot less – boisterous in the gym that maybe you would think like, okay he just kind of comes in trains and goes home like there's not there wasn't I, like I, a I've transition period okay personalities in the gym that you you hear them coming in you know johnny doesn't really do that he's he's a funny character online he's he's very good at his little videos and, and whatnot um i suppose i i've had that the, 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 where i'm located in dublin and then obviously because of the other fella you know having being, being quite well known, we get a lot of passing traffic. Okay. So I'm sort of used to guys coming in and they do a week or two or a month or two. So it's it's for, uh, for that period of time, like I'm always very pleasant to them, but I don't take them all that serious. I just feel they're, they're on their way to somewhere else. But it turned into a few months, then it turned into years, and then he got married and I right. was his best man. So, you know, now, now, now we're as thick as thieves. Um, so yeah, I, I treated them the same way as I do everybody for that first week or two that you know, you're not going to be giving them the deep secrets. <laughs> right, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but it was, it was a pleasure. It was a, it, he was always pleasant to have on the mats. He's not, you know, not a diva. He's not, I, I've, I've kind of worked him into turning up on time. He's still not the best at that. But that's a Brazilian thing. And that's right? what I say. Yes, oh, Brazilian time again, yes, is it? Yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. But he is actually getting better at it. He's getting better at it, in fairness. Uh, how do you feel about the current state of the team? Very good, very strong. Um, we're because I know there were ups and downs. Irish MMA is here, and then it was Irish MMA is down, and then it's up, down, up, down. Feels like it's up right now, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think we're we've had a good year. I think we're at nearly 70% win rate this year, and that's wow. across you know a lot of big shows. Uh, we've got finishing off the year very strong with PFL in, in Dublin. Um, on the eighth, I've got the main event, and I've got a bunch of guys on the, on the undercard. I've got the female and the male tournament finalists. And, you know, the year just ends and then I've got a main event January 13th and then I've got a main card January 20th. So, you know, for me anyway, it's just it's it's just snowballing, you know, the momentum has not gone anywhere. Um, so, yeah, I've got very positive packed mats. The other fella now looks like he's back mm -hmm. next year. I'm sure we'll drift onto that topic. Yes. <laughs> um, just chatting to him this morning. He said to say hi. I, oh. said, I said I was going on the show. Lovely. Um, so, yeah, I think I think we're I think we're. We're doing okay. How big of a blow is the potential uh, merger between Bellator and PFL, if only because that's one less place? Now, I, I'm hearing that it might still run mm. as a separate organization for at least a year or two. Right. So maybe it's not as big of a blow as initially thought, but it's one ownership, yeah. and that's one less place to negotiate an opportunity for fighters. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's simple economics, isn't it? There's going to be a lot more supply now. Right. Um one way or another, like I, I, I hear the same rumors as you. You just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I'd love to hear something definitive, but um, I suppose that's with in MMA, you've got to be comfortable with change. It seems to be a constant. Um, but yeah, so look, let's see how it plays out. It would, it would hurt, you know. Another, another show gone, and I'm not sure if I had 15 or 20 guys signed to Bellator. I'd a wow. lot anyway. Yeah. So does PFL absorb them? Maybe there's a few of them that can that can go to the UFC, um, but yeah, I think 24 will be will be a little bit tough times, and we'll have to adjust and and and, and see where we can go. I mean, there's there's great European shows. Uh, Octagon, I always talk about them. Like they're doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. I think they've just broken another record. They have a show on in Germany, and they sold more tickets than the UFC did. And like you go to any of their shows, it's 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 an event. They they are ones that really. Kind of go with the right. the uh, entertainment side of it. Them and KSW, and, I feel like KSW. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I've, I think I've been to one KSW show. I don't really. I don't. Don't seem to have anyone on their shows, but um, yeah, they're another one. Big, big stadiums. They they really go big. But KSW seems to be very much Polish for for right. Poland, whereas Octagon is all over Europe. You know, I know they're coming to the UK or they were no sorry they were in the UK. Yeah, recently. Manchester. I think. In, in Manchester, and they had that kind of interesting influencer fight the comedian right. Paul Smith did a little bit of training with me um, but uh, yeah so look you know you go from you get with knock back on one thing and then you, you start picking up another thing so I think that's what I've learned about this game is that you the situation is not the problem it's your approach to the situation that's the mm. problem so just are you like I know uh, PFL you had a media day there and uh, they're trying to invest more in Europe. It feels like no one has grabbed Europe. Like there's such a fan base there, and there's such a market in terms of talent. Yes, UFC doesn't come enough. No, uh, like the UFC could run a show every weekend if they wanted to over there, Easy. and and they don't come enough. So do you feel like PFL could be that place yeah, now? I, I've 
I, I don't know whether it's lack of a, like a, a TV deal or, or, or what it is, but you know, we obviously have huge soccer leagues. We have, um, you know, all sorts of sports represented across Europe, and it just no TV deal seems to have been. Um, anyone seems to have been able to really establish. You know, you get a few. Let's say like Cage Warriors, they have a you know UFC Fight Pass, that kind of thing. But there's maybe our the way networks is done in Europe is just very different than the States where you've got an ESPN to come along and mm -hmm. give you a massive amount of money to, to produce content. Bellator was in, a, I guess, a bit of a funny situation where they were producing content for their own company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you really value that? Um, PFL, you know, they've got... It's interesting, the PFL approach, because it's, it's sort of like... Um, really smart investors and businessmen that have started this and, and they're kind of learning MMA as they go. But they, they um, I guess they have, a TV, they have a great TV deal over here, mm -hmm. but maybe that doesn't translate. To yeah, they have the zone Europe. over there. The zone over there. And I don't know how big the zone is. Like, you know, I think of something like uh, Sky Sports or Eurosports. Right. Sports. So if one of those channels could get behind it and pay a show, whether, you know, PFL or whatever the case may be for 10 big shows a year, that'd be, I think, would be, you know, because you have all of these shows like Octagon and stuff, as far as I'm aware, all those shows are very ticket orientated. Mm. You, if you don't sell the tickets, it's, you're, you're in trouble. Whereas over here, it's almost like tickets are a, tickets are a second, secondary yep. business. You know, it's get the TV deal, some get, get Monster, or right, get Sponsor. Right. And then, hey, if we get a gate, great. But you've got shows like the, the Combat Your Global that mm. I'm involved yep. with quite a bit as well. And they're in a, t in a studio. Doesn't, don't sell a ticket at all. So... Yeah, I guess different approaches. Um, so <clears throat> you mentioned the big dog, the big man. Uh, last time I think we had you on was February, and you seemed very confident that he would fight this year. Yes. Obviously didn't work out, but yes. it feels like we're getting close to something. Yes. Are we? Yeah. Um, training a lot at the moment. He's in. Um, he's outside of Ireland at the minute, but he's with uh, Brendan Lochnane. Yes, and, I've um, seen. I, I had Brendan over my gym, and I, I realized him and Connor were going to be in the same area so i got them connected and i was delighted to see that they were i i knew they would get on really well really fast okay you know kind of like uh step brothers or something you know like doing kung fu in the basement but um so i i just knew once that connection was made it was going to be great and uh getting some great feedback from connor he's, he just sounds like he just sounds uh really motivated at the moment really enjoying it again because he has a new toy you know a new, right, a new right. training partner and brendan's a very very smart training partner just you know, if you're someone of Connor standards and you go into you go into a regular gym, you don't know. You're like, is this guy going to prove something? Is right. he going to try and hurt me? And MMA is a weird sport where I think the techniques and strategies of MMA are quite straightforward. They're quite simple. Not easy, but they're simple. What's really hard is to create an environment of training hard but safe. And it's that that's the most difficult thing I find is to get people sparring and sparring in a in a productive you know, somewhat competitive, but safe manner. Very hard to do. And you get young men and I clock you a little bit, then you have to hit me a bit harder. Whereas Brendan, and I, from my conversations with him, he's really um, strict because he runs the sessions. He's really strict with, with the training being, uh, like I said, you know, training to learn. It's not fighting to win, it's training to learn. So I just Connor was able to just slot into that right away. He's got great training partners. I've sent over a few guys from my gym. And then, um, yeah, look, back in the new year and, We'll get, we'll, get, we'll get down to it. And we were hoping for April. That was the hope. That was the what we were told. And then now it seems to be the summertime. Uh, Meaning this coming April, not yes. this past April. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. This coming April. That, that now it seems to be, to be the summertime. Yeah, Why I mean, so you probably saw the same soundbite as I did. And um, Why do you uh, think so long? I don't know. That's literally what we're, we were having a bit of a back and forward with today. Is it? And I think he said you suggested that maybe 300 is already big enough mm. um i was just wondering i i, I feel I, like I'm now it should be too. i hope i'm not getting blamed for this uh, no <laughs> not, not <laughs> said in that way they're not listening to me at least your um reasoning had some logic mm. to it okay well do we really need him for ufc 300 that's going to be such sure a, a massive event um so uh, is that are you holding back for fight week international fight week I don't, I don't my, really my know. My concern is I saw one interview with him in uh, Saudi Arabia 
uh, I forget who he was talking to when he was at the, um, yes, the Francis fight. The and he was like, I, you can hear it in his yeah. voice. I just want to fight. I Very just, frustrated. Like, like it feels like he's a caged animal. Yes. And, and it, it is reminiscent somewhat of the beginning of the pandemic where I remember speaking to him and he's like, I just want to fight. I just want to fight. And then he got so frustrated that he, you know, he said, I'm done with fighting and then finally came back. And my theory was, although it was never said, they were waiting for fans to come back so they could sell tickets. And finally they had him at the first show where they could sell tickets in Abu Dhabi in January of 21 against mm -hmm. Dustin. And it feels like they're trying, they always try with him to wait for the perfect scenario with all the stars aligned. But meanwhile, it seems like he's like this artist going crazy, like yeah. Van Gogh, you know, like he's just losing yeah. his mind. Have him fight in April. Have yeah. him fight anywhere. Why Create not? a show for him. Why not? Well, I'm worried about his the mental health. Yeah. Right. Well, he, I I was too. I'm not gonna lie, but hearing him today, and he's he, he's at the finding this great group of training partners, and at least he's doing that. Hey, it's not quite the same as getting to compete in in front of a a large crowd, but at least he's getting training in, and he, I, that's so important. We heard Volk talk about that. You know, keep me busy. I don't. Like yeah. Um, so I, I love to hear that he's, he's training hard with these guys, but, um, yeah, look, and this is what I was saying to him as well. Yeah. Okay. It's a knockback if we're hearing it was April, but now it's July, but it's not the end of the world. Mm. You know, it, it is an extra couple of months. It's, it's not great, but Hey, you're, you're enjoying your training at the moment. Let's just keep that going. But it, it is like the sport, it, it, you are around for such a short time, um, as compared to well, I'm not going to try and make a comparison to other sports or whatever, but like, you know, like a career, era careers, we, we can do this for decades. Right. For fighters, it is a short time. And I heard like someone casually throwing out that maybe Aspinall should wait a year and a half for John Jones. Like, Insanity. A year and a half. Like, yeah. What percentage of that, of his overall earning capacity are you asking him to sit and play video games or, or something? Yeah. I mean, the guys should be getting three, four offers a year. Um, no, it's up to them whether they, they want to accept it or not, but. Yeah, I, 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 I hope it changes. I hope there is an April date, and you know, if you get get, get a good, a quick, good win, a quick win, maybe back in again in September or the end of the summer. It's not the leg, right? He's fully healed. Oh, he's a hundred percent. Has been for for a while. There's for, that. You saw the six month sure, yeah. exclusion, and fair enough. That's that's the rule. That's the rule. So that's up in April. Let's go. U UFC was very upset. They they felt like you saw the like took some shots at him. How did I you feel about that? I didn't understand that at all. That was a very strange one. I, I would have understood if, let's say, let's say UFC was dropping USAD at the end of the year and then there was a rumor, or not even a rumor, like an announcement, Connor's fighting January 15th, you mm. know, something like that. You could understand USADA being upset then and say, oh, so that's why you let us. Right. But there was never talk. There was only ever talk of, okay, for example, was given in a couple of weeks ago, whenever it was, and fast forward six months, that's April. That's all there was ever talk of. So when I saw those uh, statements from USADA, and, and I mean, you guys over here, so like litigious and everything, I was like, why are you, it sounds very, I don't know, bitchy or something. It's like, at least wait for UFC to try and, and break the rule, try and get him in early. Oh, we're, we're the new company now, so we're, we're hitting reset and he's fighting in January or February, but they never did. So why would you throw it out there that they're trying to do something when, they weren't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, so you agreed with the UFC because because they felt like they were trying to make an example out of Connor or hitting him yes. below the belt or using yeah. him as the reason why. Yeah, I, I suppose I'm coming out more from Connor's. Yeah, of course. Corner, but I agree with him. Him being upset, saying the, I, the fucking jacket. I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm hoping and looking forward to fighting in April. Like there was never any talk of of trying to circumvent that 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 rule. So very odd. Have you ever had a conversation with him at this point? Like, what's the point? Why, why are we doing this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I have. And it's kind of like what Volk said. It's like these, I think these, there's certain people on this planet that are, that are built for, to be in that environment. I don't know if you remember, there was a great, um, I think BT Sports did it. And it's sort of like, uh, it's, it's an animated, it's Connor talking and it's an animated him walking towards the cage, taking off chains. Mm. Do you remember that? Yes, one? I do remember that. Yes, yes, yes. I thought that was brilliant. And whoever got it, whoever got Connor, um, I don't know, maybe it was an interview with you, I'm not sure who it was, but they really got him to say what was going on. I think that's, that's always a, a tricky one for you guys, the journalists, to find the right way of extracting the words out of a fighter. Because, you know, you look at the, the boxer Usk and it's like, how do you feel? I'm feeling. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the joke being, 
as, as Gunnar Nelson would said, if, if, if feelings, if you could talk about feelings, they'd be called talkings. Right. They're called feelings. So it's very hard to get your feelings out. And I just thought on that little monologue, Connor nailed it. And, and, and that's what he's designed to do, for better or for worse. That's just who he is. And he, he somewhat needs it. He, he, he loves it, and he loves it. He enjoys it. And he's, you know, it's not forever. He's whatever he is now, mid-30s. It's not, it's not going to be for the next 20 years, but maybe there's a couple of years and a couple of things he still wants to achieve and do. And, um, you know, he'll blink, he'll be my age, and he'll be looking back, ah, maybe I could have fought a couple of more times, you know. What, if you enjoy playing golf, you want to play golf. If you right. enjoy doing MMA, you want to do MMA. Uh, you in favor of it being Chandler? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I it kind of has to be, that. right? Just I think so. You know, yeah. it's gone on for a while. And, right. Uh, El Mihal has been sitting on the sideline, wait, uh, patiently waiting. Um, yeah, and I just, I, I like the matchup. I like the stylistic matchup. I've said it before. It's, it's somewhat reminiscent of, of his first UFC title fight against um, Chad. So, um, yeah. Any I, chance I, at 55? Or do you think those days are done? <clears throat> I, I think it's not impossible, but it would, then you'd have to be getting into the wide. Like, what's okay. the big wide? Okay, area? okay. Um, you know, 170, they both are, you see them beside each other, they're both very, very similar. And it, this is where we, leaving those guys aside, we kind of get into the somewhat silliness of, of MMA that you have two guys who are 175, feeling great, and you go, okay, now, okay, over yeah. the next 10 days, get to 155, uh, fight there. No, 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 we'll give you a day and a half to go yeah. back to 175. So what's the fucking point of the 155 part? <laughs> you know, there's a, there's different trains of thought out there. But but I think for Connor now, it's like, well, why am I cutting 20 pounds to go back up 20 pounds? Me and Chandler, we're pretty much the same size. Um, yeah, so. Do you worry about, okay, now it's seven months, this guy has to, like, it looks like he could go in two months. How are we going to keep him? go this weekend? Right. Do you worry about that? Weekend. What good does worry do me? Mm. <laughs> it's, like, it's like being in a rocking chair. Gives you something to do, but ultimately takes you nowhere. This is something <laughs> or my grandmother me, once I think Orla, she sent me a great one. It was like, worry is, it's like paying a debt you don't owe. Mm. So look, what will be will be. Today is great. Yeah. I'm with my good friend yes, Ariel. Yes. Flying home to see Orla and, and, and my son. I'm looking forward to that. For me to live in seven months' time, I, I can't do it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'm a worrier. I wish I wasn't. Yes, I that, worry that about is in everything. Your it is that my is in nature. Your nature. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, it is. Uh, I saw you with uh, old friend Dylan Dennis yes. over the weekend. Yeah, that's uh, bumped into him. He, he popped into the bar to say hello. Haven't seen him in forever. Um, <laughs> you didn't help him prepare for the uh, Logan Paul fight. Fortunately, no. <laughs> no. no, he he never he never took us up at that. But he had stuff got you know he had kids yes, yes. and whatever else he has going on. Dylan's always got some drama to deal with. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was lovely to see him. It was, it was, it was nice to see him. Um, Dylan in the UFC, this is what needs to happen. Why not? Yes. It feels like the biggest no brainer of all time. Why not? Huge. I, I would, I was suggesting putting him on the same card as Connor. Maybe that's too far down the line now, but you know, sort of like back in the day we, when we had Connor and Artem on the same card and, uh, Chris Avila and, and, and Nate, yes. you know, like a little team thing. Yes. Connor and Dylan together on the same card would do insane. I mean, Connor by himself really he doesn't need Dylan, but you get what you know what I mean. Like I, I think it would be saying. a nice story. Um, I feel like it has to happen. I don't know. Like it, it, it has to happen. I mean, on the same card. No, no, no. Just Dylan in the UFC. Sorry. Yeah, I have. You know, again, why not? Right. Like, uh, what does he have to do? Is it that? Yeah, but you know, look, promoters pro, trainers train, fighters fight. Sure. So who who am I to? Uh, well, that does bring guess. up it brings up a great point. The one thing I think he's truly missing now is a coach. Yes, is a leader, is a mentor. Like th it, it was a little bit shocking to a degree to see him at the fight. I was there in Manchester. He didn't have a head coach. He had a bunch of great fighters and people by his side: Andy Main, Phil Hawes. Like these are great human beings. But you need a coach, right? I think so. You need that structure, whether it's... I suppose I'd know, say that. It's my yeah, job. yeah, no, of course. <laughs> but, like, I don't think anyone is immune to that. I don't think anyone is bigger than... Yeah, I mean, yeah. even Connor has a coach. You know, like, yeah. everyone has a coach. Floyd had a coach. Yeah. And so I think he really needs to find that. Yeah, and, you know, for when, when, when Dylan first came in, he was living in Ireland for long periods of time. We were doing long training camps. He was part of those. So we got very close. Um, but then there is just geography. You know, he had to move back to New York. I'm right. in Dublin. What can I do, you know? Um, 
and whether it's me or not, like there's plenty of fantastic gyms around here he could go to. But uh, yeah, I suppose this is, it's a question for Dylan. Um, last night hanging out with him, I said, you have your room. We have a room in my house that oh, wow. he, he can take anytime he wants. I uh, still have some of his expensive trainers there, so I stick them on eBay, Dylan, if you don't hurry up. He keeps his shoes there at your house? He, he just left it for a couple of, because I didn't see them for months after he right. left. Found these big ass, like, expensive, I don't really know the shoe game, but yeah, sure yeah. expensive. I was like, oh, they're Dylan's. And a lot of uh, pizza boxes that he'd hidden under the bed, but that's wow. That's another conversation. That is a weird thing to do. <laughs> Eating pizza and the... He was getting, like, late night, he would call pizza places to deliver to my house like during the night I yeah. get, you know jet lag or whatever yeah, yeah. and then I don't know whether you didn't want me to see it or something so it built up and eventually <laughs> when he went home I went to clear out the room and there was like a lot of pizza boxes <laughs> stuffed underneath the bed but oh my gosh uh, we'll, we'll forgive him for that what a character he's become right in the sport I know I know I, he's uh, he's something yes do you, do you feel like you have the kind of relationship with him where you can tell him hey maybe go to this person this person can be your coach. I have done. Okay. I made suggestions and I, I thought Connor had set up a great thing if he'd have come over to Dublin. He had, you know, Phil and uh, Sutcliffe and, and the Crumlin boxing team. They were all ready to go and let's do a couple of months proper training, but um didn't come about. Um if he was to get to if he was to get a UFC fight, I'd be strongly suggesting he go into a team. And, right. You know, I suppose his personality is probably beefing with half the team already. Yes. But uh, he still needs it. And it was great, great to see him. He was somewhat in with Alex Pereira. So maybe go over to there. Right. Wherever those guys are based. So train with them. Um, or, of course, he'd be more than welcome to come over to Dublin for a couple of months. But, yeah, yeah I do agree with you. You do need some some level of right. structure and foundation. Um, you know, every other sport has it. So I, it's, it's somewhat necessary. Were you there when uh, Ian Gary and, and Connor sparred? No, um, I wasn't. They did it that day. They're, that evening, he dropped in again for my uh, jiu-jitsu session, and he, he jumped on the mats. He did, you know, roll with Connor, roll, roll the guys. Ian, great guy, yeah, Ian. Um, what do you what do you make of his uh, potential? And what do you I, think? I, I I think he's phenomenal. He's really really good. Um, and I, and I say to people, if you want to say haters or detractors, keeps winning. Yeah. Keeps winning. Whoever they put in front of him, he wins. And he, he's he got that other little bit of charisma, a little bit of generating interest. You know, as Ali said, half tune in to watch me get whooped, mm -hmm. half tune in to watch me whoop. They all pay. Right. So he seems to, he's, he's good at working that side of things as well. Um, he's got a, a tough test in, in December. I don't, I don't quite understand his situation at the moment. He's somewhat of a... A nomad Ronan, as well, yes. A nomad. Um... So that's the, I, I don't know how that's going to work out. He was in with such a uh, strong and and, and uh, excellent team with uh, Henry and and the guys Kilcliff. Kilcliff, thank you. Um, so to go from that to just like randomly dropping into different places, I, I he seems to be taking the positives out of it and, and and learning what he can. But it, it's 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 going to be difficult, you know, to sort to sort of get a, a, a proper training camp in. I feel if you. If you're kind of just bouncing from one place to the to the next, I hear you at the moment he's in Brazil, so maybe he's a bit more right. settled in with the team now. I don't, I don't, I'm not too sure, but yeah. We, Can that work for anyone? That that like obviously, I know I'm asking you about something that would kind of go against what you believe in, right? Yes. But do, do you know of any fighter that it could be successful where you're bouncing around from gym to gym before every fight? Like you need some stability, right? Yeah, because and and the. I suppose that one of the main things, which I suppose is coming out a little bit with the Leon situation and everything, is that it takes a while for you to come in and build a little bit of that trust. Right. You know, because that's what I said to you. The, 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 the techniques of MMA are quite simple. Not easy, but they're simple. Right. What's actually hard is to have an environment where it's safe to fail. It's safe for me to try a technique on you without you trying to hurt me. Um, you know, if you catch me in, a, in an arm lock, you're sensible with it. Or if you catch me with a clean punch you're sensible with it. That takes a while to build up and it takes a while to build rapport. So if you're a week or two of somewhere, I think you're only starting to get that and then boom, you're mm. gone again. So I think that would be, that'd be one of the more difficult uh, sides of it. It would be um, trying to get that group of, of training partners that um, you trust and, and that you can learn from and that you get on with. You know, the training is short enough, whether it's two or three hours a day, and then outside of that, you want that support now, okay? I'm having a bad day. Do you, do you have 20 minutes? Could we go grab a coffee, you know? 
And that seems to be always like a few weeks before a fight, something happens, something emotional happens with a family or, and, you, and you, it's good to have that, those people you can lean on. I'm, I'm actually quite anxious about this one. Like, have you seen the video of him? What do you think about this? You know, you need that, those people. So, um, hey, you know, wish him all the best and then let's see how he does. But it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. I was listening to Tom Aspinall on Saturday. He's very open about how nervous he gets. Yes. Super nervous, super emotional. <clears throat> he reminds me a lot of GSP in that he's very comfortable with talking about those feelings. Other people won't admit to that. Do you get nervous? Like, do you, do you remember a fight where you were just super nervous? Ultimately, it worked out. It was all good. You felt good. But, like, do you feel that same anxiety as well? Um, so what I usually say is for that, if we've done everything that we could, and it, it's sort of something I do when I, when, I get, when I finally get to the corner, I try to get good posture, deep breath in, and then I breathe out slowly saying, we did all that we could. Because now it's Vegas. Right. Now we're rolling the Yeah. You know, it, did Aldo not train correctly for his big contest with Conor? Of course he did. 11, 12 seconds later, he's staring at the lights, Aspinall. It went his way that time, but he was clipped himself. Right. So the sport is so intense and so many things can happen. Um, I don't stress too hard about the result, as, as weird as that might sound. I feel it's somewhat out of our control. I do stress about the training and the lead up to it. Do we, tick, do we turn over every box? Do we tick every, do, do we do all that we could? Do we eat the right way? Do we do this? And if we've done that, I'm actually there almost enjoying it. Wow, really? As long as we did everything that we could. If we didn't, then or we know about a niggling injury or something, then that's going to start, that's going to start eating at me. But yeah, uh, you know, and obviously I'm doing it a while. Sure. Um, so of course the first few fights were a lot different where you're just a bag of nerves. But again, I'm quite pragmatic about these things. I'm asking myself, well, is it helpful for me to be in the same emotional state as them? And mm. you see the corner men that, and that's a style and some people um, respond to that. You're screaming in their face and stuff, that's just not me. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I suppose short answer is not not, not really, no. Uh, what do you do when, if you've ever been faced with this, when the fighter in the locker room is supremely anxious? Is, are, are there, or is it just everyone's different and you have to know how to speak to them? And A little bit, but I, I would say, and it's something that's served me very well, is that right from day one, first of all, I make them chase me to be allowed to do the first MMA fight. I really want them harassing me to, to fight. Hmm. Whereas if from day one, I'm sort of seeing you in the gym and you're quite good and I say, hey, does this show on in three weeks' time? You want to go on it? You go, do you want to fight? I'll get you fighting. Yeah, okay. You're doing it to make me happy. Hmm. Whereas if, I, if you come to me and you say, John, does the show on in two months? Can you put me on? And I go, nah, keep training. And then you harass me again. You harass me again. So by the time we get to there, it's an enjoyable experience for you. And there is some people designed for performing to a crowd, you know, um, so as long as that was done right from day one, right at the start, their first amateur MMA fight, of course the, 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 the enormity of the situation grows as they turn pro, as they go up the cards, as they start headlining events. But it was all started in the right way. So again, locker room tends to be fun. It's, you're, you're, we trained as best we could for it. This person's a performer. He wants a million eyes on him. And, uh, you know, you're fit, you're in shape, you have somewhat of a strategy, what we're going to do. Yeah, let's, let's enjoy it. Okay. Do, do you get into, like, heavy-duty philosophy, pumping them up, or by then is it just all, like, tra- you know, like, are you the type, everyone come together, let's have a chat, like, what is, what is or is it different for every single person? So that's, that's an interesting one. So what I, what I try and do is I try to get one of my fighters, I try to get him to corner alongside me for a fight or two. Oh. All of them. I get them to do it a few times with me. Oh. Because they corner in the way they want to be cornered. Oh. So Interesting. some guys, it's all about, um, you know, pumping the guy up like, let's go, you're going to kill this motherfucker, you know, whatever the case may be. And I'm like, ah, okay, that's what you want. Ah. Other guys, stoic, just information. You know what we did. You know what this guy does. Ah, that's how you want to be cornered. So I kind of like to do that to learn how to approach it with them. I've got some fighters, you know, religious. They want to do, they do the prayer before the mm. fight. So, um, yeah, it, that's something, again, that's, if you're that, if you're a guy that's fighting in with 10 different gyms, it's hard to build that rapport. It's hard to build up that, you know, understanding of what, what it is. What's, what's the buttons? Is he a family man? Am I going to tell him about 
this is for your kids, you know? Right. Maybe he has no family, he doesn't care about that kind of right, stuff. Right, 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 right. You, know? you don't want to look stupid in front of a million people, you know? So everybody will have different, um, it's, you know, there's not a thousand different ones, it's five or six big personality traits that you, you, you learn, you pick up, and you go, oh, that's the one for him. And now you got Nate the Great Kelly in the gym. The, I, I know got, you have, I got you, you two, have two Nate Nathan Kellys. Kellys. Yes, yes, yes. You have two. It's a bit of a strength. Uh, both on PFL, right? Correct, yeah. But one I, main event on one right, 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 right. Oh, I, I'm, I'm referring to the youngster yes. who we first met at the freaking Aldo O'Connor one. When was that? 2015, I believe it was, right? It was right before yes. what was supposed to be the July fight, then December. This little kid who got up on someone's shoulders, I don't know who it was at the time, and told Dana that he's going to be... Now he's fighting on that PFL event on December 8th. <laughs> Has he been at the gym this whole time? Yeah, yeah. That is uh, unbelievable. His mother runs the gym for me, Sarah. Does she really? Yeah. Oh, she, wow. She's the general manager. She takes care of all the problems. Thank you very much, Sarah. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, Nate's been with me. He was with me before that video you see of him. There's photographs of him seven or eight years of age, you know, with me. Um, and now he, uh, you know, my Train Alta program, yep. uh, formerly Wimp to Warrior, now Train Alta. Nate runs that. So he's in the gym at no six way. in the morning every day teaching. How old 40, is he? 19. Wow. And he's teaching all these kids. Yes. And, and he's, he, he's, some he's grown men, right? Grown oh, men yeah. and women. Yeah. And he's, you know, when I first had him do it, I was a little bit, um, you know, sl slow to do it because he, he looks very boyish as well. But he has a commanding presence. I mean, you see him, how bold he was to right. give a shout That's out true. to Dana at yeah. that age. And he's been performing on the world stage for the amateur kickboxing side of things. He's fought all over the world, won all these different titles. So very calm in stressful situations, very calm in teaching situations. And he's, he's got a great humor on him, which is an important side of the, of the profession. And uh, he's doing a great job with the Train Alta program. We've kind of pulled him back a little bit now uh, as he's fighting in a couple of weeks. But um, yeah, he pretty much works full time in the gym and his mom runs the gym. Wow. And so this is an amateur fight. Yes. But eventually he's going to turn pro. Yes, maybe. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. I, I, I don't know. I don't you don't know. know. Up that's, to him. That's up to him. Yeah. He's gonna, what an opportunity for him. Yeah. You know, like amateurs is usually the, the gym hall. Sure. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's going to walk out to the tree arena to thousands of people. Um, so this will, I don't know whether he'll come to me at the end of that and go, don't ever ask me to do that again. Okay. Which has happened. Yeah. Or he might say, can I turn pro next week? I don't know. Okay. But we'll... Is this his first amateur fight as well? No, he's done a bunch on, on, on the local scene. Okay. And, you know, the IMFs, the, you know, he's done, he's done some of that. Um, he's probably got a thousand amateur kickboxing fights and a, a ton of jiu-jitsu matches and, and all of that. And, it, and he's used to kind of having a little bit of a spotlight on him since, since right. that. So, you know, when he does a jiu-jitsu match... It's a super fight, jiu-jitsu match, you know, so right. he's just used to that going out and performing in front of a crowd. So I'm very confident he will enjoy it. I'm very confident he'll do well. I, I think he will be the type to chase me to go pro, but I, I've been wrong plenty of times before. If you have someone who is with you, you know, bottom floor, do you want them to have X amount of amateur fights before they turn pro? And if so, what is that number? Yeah, so at least amateur competition. So they, they, you might get, Nate's an example. He, with hundreds of kickboxing fights in, in his back pocket, um, it's he won't need as many as, you know, let's use, say, Kieran Clark, who who had 25, 30 amateur MMA fights, then went pro, now he's 8-0 or something with Bellator. So he's a good example of someone that just did MMA from day one, mm. whereas Nate's an example of someone doing, you know, the core sports mm. since he's four or five years of age. So although he's only 19, he's about 15 years of international competition experience almost so um yeah i don't think he, he would need as many but it is that is a bit of a art in, in trying to see are they ready at this stage and and as as i've gotten more involved in the sport i'm actually trying to discourage people from going to pro mm. i actually would rather more just state amateur and imas have given them a great vehicle to represent your country you know it's an almost an Olympic feel when you go to the World Championships and you see all the different countries in their track suits. And um, I, I actually, I'm, I'm finding myself more drawn to that as time goes on. I, I say it that I think I will, I don't know how long I'll be around the pro game, maybe not too much longer, um, we'll see. But I'll do the amateur side of it forever. And I really like the IMAS, I really like that feel to it. And you know, in boxing in Ireland, boxing is such a big sport, the amateur side of it. 
it's not really spoken about like, oh, you're 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 five and zero as an amateur now. You're going pro. It's, oh, no, pro is a different sport. I don't. Oh. I want to just. I want to represent my country, win a European medal, and then get a job. Carry on with your life. Wow. You know, the pro game. There's so in all that I, I've been in it. I've had one guy that got retirement money. A few other guys got you know money to buy a house or something. But it's not like it's a job. It's it's something you know it, that a lot of them will be able to do forever. It's a couple of years. Well, you know the economics of the sport, and you've guys still in the UFC that have a job right. besides that. Right. So, but it's quite damaging to fight professional MMA, you know, with the elbows and everything, whereas the average side, more padding, bigger gloves. You get the feel of, of, of MMA, and you get to represent your country. Um, but it's, it's, it's not, you know, you have to go from there to pro. So you can go from there, and maybe you're going to be a school teacher, or a carpenter, or, I don't know. Are you thinking about the end? You just said, I don't know how much longer. Yeah. I feel like you were having a little internal uh, on, yeah. on how much to say there, but are, are you thinking about the end? Yeah, there's definitely a timeline to this. There is, okay. You know, you, you know the, two, the age in your I, mind? It's probably actually more, I have certain guys on my team that I want to see them out, mm. so I wouldn't go until there. How many left who fall in that category? A small number. So, okay. A small number. Um, the, the team has, has grown all the time, but... So with, with Dave Roach coming in now, he's doing such an amazing job at them. I can back up a little bit, back okay. up a little bit. And, you you know, like that? This is this is by design. Yes. Yes. Do you think definitely. there'll be a point where you're you're not going on the road? Oh, that's it, hundred percent. Yeah. Like but, I, I I admire. I, I'm at shows with. I see the MMA coaches. I don't have to say names, and they're in their sixties, and yeah. they're still like that. Won't be me. Definitely not. I'm I'm 47 in January. Mm. Um, Do you go past 50? I don't know. Wow! Again, it's that. I, so we're getting be close. in and around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll definitely be in and around there. It'll be, it'll be more. And I know my guys are watching this. It'll be more. The, the guys that were really with me from the start and that I took from from sure. amateur to pro, and you know they're at that five and 0, six and zero stage. And let's see, do we get to the next level? I I, I wouldn't abandon any of them. Right, right, right. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it does start wearing on you this game. Um, emotionally, emotionally, uh, being away from the family so much, seeing fighters, you know, getting hurt, and and you know, going to the big shows on Saturday, and then the politics behind, it and arguing about small sums of money, and all of those type of things. But the amateur side is so clean. Mm. There's no money involved. You just get in. If you win your spot on the national trials, you're on the team. It's not because you were high five and someone or friends or someone. You win your spot, you're on the national right. team. And you're on the national team. You go compete in the Europeans, or you go to the Worlds. You win some medals, and and then you, you know, carry on with your life. And but I like that. I I, I can imagine because like I feel like we don't think about this component. I was thinking of a guy like Yuri, so intense. He puts so much into it. Pay per view ends one a.m. We all go to bed. This and that. You guys have you've been there in the locker room or the trip to the hospital. That is drain. You're not going to bed probably till who knows seven. Maybe you're going straight to the airport right after. Heartbroken. You've put. Yeah. That's got, I like to do that week after week after week. Yeah. And, and that's the, you know, you're making a good point there. That's like for the fighter, he might be doing that twice a year. The coaches may be doing that twice a month. Yeah. If, and you're, yeah. you're on this roller coaster. And that's why I do say to the guys, whatever happens on Saturday night, I won't commiserate too hard if you lose and I won't celebrate too hard if you win. Because hmm. the next day, it's just carry on. Like, you know, back in the day with, with the big Connor fights, it was like, a, you know, to be a week in Vegas after a right. fight. I can't do that anymore, you know. Um, it's, I wake up Sunday, you're, you're traveling back home, you're back in the gym Monday, and then I have another guy looking at me going, hey, so you're ready for this weekend? What, what do you think about this guy? Yeah, and yeah, should I do this yeah, and should I do that? Yeah. And you get that done, and then it's, 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 it's on repeat. I have 60 or 70 guys at the moment competing regular. So it's... Can you go on vacation? You try to squeeze them in here and there, you know, like... Um, like uh, I used to say after the Mayweather fight, I remember that one. It was such a great trip. Me and Orla went to uh, the Keys, Florida, the, the Keys in Florida, for a few days afterwards. But it's it is kind of I've certainly I've, I don't know how many holidays I've cancelled because you know we'd book a holiday four months in advance, and then a month out, Johnny Walker's had to get in sure, a fight. Sure. So I have and Orla has been with me since you know for a long time, so she understands that that is my life at the moment and and. I have to accept that. Um, you know, Danny McCormick there, she fought on in Boston and uh, defending her Invicta, Invicta world yeah. title. And a couple of weeks out from that, I'd gotten 
all expenses, two tickets to the Rugby World Cup final in Paris. Mm. You know, me and Orla love the city. We really enjoy rugby. Sadly, it wasn't Ireland in there, but it, they were close. But then that fight got confirmed that weekend. So that's burn those tickets, throw them oh, away. Oh, man. You know, you just, and, and that seems to just happen all the time. So, yeah. Um, me and Orla, we have a uh, little three nights away over Christmas booked in, it's, it's just in Dublin, but a nice hotel. Me, her, and Connell. So I'm looking forward to those three nights. But then, you know, you'd have Brad Katona kind of elbowing you. Say, You're not going too far now, are you? I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm up January 20th. Right, 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 right. Walker's just had to be confirmed January 13th. So, Golly. It's, uh, what happens when your son says he wants to do this as well? Um, God, I don't know. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's almost going mean, to... He probably is at the gym a bunch, right? Oh, I, and he is hyper... Like, like Again, that's his thing. He, are you going to fight the boys? Uh, I'm going to fight the boys. You know, so he seems to so be drawn towards it. And I see Connor Jr. I mean, uh, he's a little he's, animal. He's like, almost, so skillful. Like, yeah, it's going to be he, you know, yeah, young I John know. versus young <laughs> and young Connor going nah. through this in 20, 20 years. Oh God, yeah, yeah. I could just see it. Maybe, maybe I'll be sitting here. Do in you think there's years, a better chance? Could, could you imagine? Yeah, I feel like there's a better chance of him being a your son being a coach than a fighter, like wanting to follow in your footsteps. Do you think there's a possibility um, of that. Have yeah. you thought of this? And will you yeah. try to deter him not to do it? I won't deter him. Like, Orla's all for it. She's she's actually probably more forward than I am. Wow. Um, I say this, like, he'll certainly know how to defend himself. Hmm. You know, I want him at a level where he's he's confident bringing his girlfriend out for a meal and he, you know, situational awareness and some, some self-defense techniques. If he starts falling in love with it in training, I'd probably make it a much tougher path for him. Hmm. Because if, if I know he's going in there, not that I don't send anybody in who's not ready already, but it probably will have to be a few more hoops for him to jump through because it's, um, you know, it's, it's a serious sport what we do, so. Being a coach though, would you be okay with that? Oh, of course, coaching is, coaching is great. I, get, yeah. I can do this forever. <laughs> um, and he, he might, like right from when he was six months old, seven months old, We'd have him down and there'd be stuff going on in the gym, but he always wanted to sit beside the cage because that's where the sparring goes down. Oh. And he loves watching sparring. And he has this thing at the moment, you know, Johnny Walker lives with us. And uh, like when Connell has his bath in the evenings, he, he puts his mohawk yeah. up and he goes, Johnny Walker. Yeah, and then awesome. when I walk in, he, he goes, Johnny Walker. And he runs at me and grabs my leg. You know? oh, that's awesome. <laughs> He's, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Do you find yourself, rem are you a reminiscer? Do, do you think a lot about you know, the last 10 years. I think that's your, uh, the, it's, you know, the worry is about the future and then the reminisce is about the past. I think I'm more just now. You're Okay, so um, you're really, because I am a reminiscer and a worrier. See, okay, so the, <laughs> you're neither there or there. Oh, yes, 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 Meet yes. me here. Okay, um, good. I'm, I, I guess. No, I, I, like, I, I have so much, or like, we have a room of memorabilia that just have never gotten around to put, you know, she just came across the, the UFC poster for Connor uh, and Eddie in New York. It's a beautiful poster. Everybody has a sign and it's sitting in my attic. Wow. So I'm looking forward. Maybe it's when, you know, I take that step back, going into that room and taking out all these posters, putting them up. And uh, and then I'll, I'll allow myself maybe that that reminiscing. And I'm sure at some stage in a couple of years time, Connell will be looking at some YouTube video and say, Daddy, is that the yeah, year? Yeah. You know, so I, I am looking forward. I, I definitely am looking forward to that. Uh, you, do you have like a room in your house with all? Yeah, you do. Full room with all, you know, the UFC tracksuits yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you get new in every event. I think I have about 40 of those UFC bags. Um, but, you know, old, old lanyards, posters, little, little, little memorabilia you pick up as you go along, like your, your little collection yes, here, yes, you yes, know. Yes, yes. And each one has a, has a story, and each one, you know, I'm sure we'll. I picture, you know, some Christmas time. I said, oh, what, what, what was the Mayweather fight like? Oh, well, my God. Here, I have a story for yes, you. Yes, you know, yes, that yes, kind of yes, yes. thing. So I feel I've been, I've had a very blessed and very busy last decade or two. And, and um, so it, for sure it will be fun at some stage. But at the moment, there's too much happening now for me to either worry about the future right. or so regret reminisce. or reminisce about the past. Uh, what do you think would be the first memory that comes to mind? If, if, if your son one day when he's 10, so you've long since taken a step back, uh, that's like seven years from now, right? Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm right about that. And he's like, what was the best? What was the best memory? What was the, what was the apex of it all? 
Well, I suppose there's, there's a very unusual... Well, okay, so fighting-wise, it's always going to be Connor and Eddie in New York. There were, there were so oh, many really? little... That, that one? Yeah, there's, and there's so many little stories that went around that week. That week. And, you know, the, the, the press conference that... You're, you'll find it's hard to believe, but we were running late for that. <laughs> and um, somehow or another, we were up at Central Park, and you've got to come all the way down to, to you know, Madison Square Garden. We, the, the, the police got involved and gave us a full police escort down. So, you know, I sit beside Orla, going down Fifth Avenue, I suppose yeah. it would have been. Yeah. In New York, you know, we hadn't been we hadn't been here all that many times with a full police escort. But where am I gonna do that again? Yeah. yeah. You know, how how is that ever gonna happen again? And then somebody to throw a curveball at you from a totally different angle, in a couple of weeks time, I'll be back here for the listing of, of Train Alta on the New York Stock Exchange, ringing the bell with uh, hopefully Orla and Connell will, will be alongside me. So, you know, him at three, he's not going to understand it now, but maybe 10 or 12, and he sees the photo of him in the New York Stock Exchange. Yes, yes. With his old man listing a, a company. Like, so th that's, that's a very exciting thing from a business point of view. And then from a sporting point of view, yeah, it, it can't get much. The, the, the first MMA event in New York, the champ champ, you know, and then the little stories that are always there, fight week, things going right, things going wrong, dealing with them. Um, yeah, there'd be. There'd I be thought maybe stories. you'd say Aldo just because like that was, but I mean, this is like picking your favorite child, right? Like there's no <laughs> wrong answer. These are all. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. The, the Aldo one w was great as well. And, you know, we've been to Vegas so many times. It's, 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 I always enjoy going there, but for me, Nowhere is like New York. Right. You know, New York is of, of everywhere I've gone in the world. New York's my favorite city to visit. I do like leaving it. I think I think I can do three or four days at a time. It's a draining city. There's so much to do, so much going on. Um, Vegas, as, as as weird as it would be to say, is a lot calmer for me than New York because we usually stay off. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like you're every night going down the casino. Um, but um, but yeah, you know, like you said, your your favorite kids. Who who are you gonna pick? Will you be at the three arena next weekend for Oh yeah. You'll be there. I'm so sad about that. Oh this. sorry, no, sorry, sorry. You're talking about the I'm boxing. Talking about Katie Taylor. Yeah, yeah, the boxing. Um No, of course I know you'll be at PFL Europe. Yeah, you're sorry. working. Yeah. Um yeah. because you weren't at the first fight. I wasn't. And now you're just reminding me that that I actually am in Dublin for yes. the weekend. And we have like a guy I'll give a massive amount of credit for for Johnny Walker's development over the last few years. His coach, oh, Thomas I, Cardi. Thomas Cardi. Yes, because Johnny walked him out. Yes. Yes, that's right. So I'm sure Johnny's going to it to walk him out again. Um, I, yeah, I'll see if, if see if Orla's up for for going along to watch, of course, watch Katie, and then I'm nervous Thomas. about this. It's very hard. I love Katie. I just uh, go running it back. I, I was lucky enough to be there. I won't be there this time. Um, uh, the opponent, Chantal Cameron, is very good. Brilliant. And so to run it back, I just, my heart breaks for her because she waited to fight in Ireland for so long. She had to wait so freaking long and then speaks to just what kind of a special human being she is. Yeah, sure. Give me the 140 champion. In my, She could have fought a broomstick. Yes. And sold that place out. Absolutely. And now she's like, yeah, sure. No, no problem. Let's Let's freaking do this again. Yeah. I wanted to have that win, that moment I know. in Ireland, you know? I would like to think as well that the fans, you know, not everybody's going to be as, as clued in as you, but I'd like to think that they res at least respect that. And, oh, for sure. You know, they're going along, maybe this is our last one, I don't know. And, and, and the, the, the result is almost incidental as opposed to the, the build-up and the journey and singing the songs in the audience and, you know, I'm, whatever way it goes, I'm sure it's going to be a very exciting fight and... You know, with boxing, it's a little bit more forgiving. If you have the, the Aspinall fight, everybody, the easiest bet in the world was sub one round. You know, right. Maybe sub two minutes was an easy enough bet. With boxing, it tends to, you know, there's not too many of those type of fights. You'll get six rounds, eight rounds, or 10 rounds, whatever, whatever the case may be. And then at the end, one hand goes up, one hand goes down. It still celebrate the whole achievement. Her whole career is, you know, her, her pretending to be a boy back yes. in the amateur days. Like There's so many amazing stories around her. And then, for whatever it went down with with the with the pro side of boxing going into the dark ages for a while, and her to be there, what if what if she'd retired and missed it all together? Right. At least she did do true, it. True. True. And our walk out, I I I I know you're at it. I was just watching it, and I thought he did a great job at the walk out. That was amazing. It's, but you know the hair yeah, sticking up. Amazing. You know the UFC tends to be just three, two, one, go, go, yeah, go, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. you have to run to the cage, and you, you know it's it's all over before you even know it. 
Um, I, I love the walk. I'm sure they're going to give her a, a special one for this one. And it'll be right up, you know, we'll, we'll enjoy and embrace all of that. And then whatever way the result goes, the result goes, you know. Well, I'm hoping it works out for her. This has been lovely. This really has. You have it's a you have a, a flight catch to catch. What are we at now? We're at 2.30. 2.30, So I told yeah. you you'd be out of here. Um, thank you so much for coming. Uh, congrats on all the success, as always. Good luck with the upcoming fights. What a schedule that is. Jeez. Um, a little break for Christmas. Three days. Uh, three days, <laughs> yes. Brad, give me three days off. <laughs> Very nice of him. And uh, good luck with everything going on with uh, Train Alta. Um, man, you got so many things going on. You have Train Alta, obviously the gym, doing work with Monster. Am I missing something that we should be plugging? Well, I'll, I'll say uh, uh, baby number two on the way. Baby well. number two is a pretty big one, yes. That's, I was thinking more professionally, but personally <laughs> is a pretty big one. Return When's the of the date? Notorious. Um, the due date, bizarrely enough, is, is uh, Paddy's Day. Oh, wow. So, oh, wow. We're getting close. Yeah. Okay. Mid-March. I didn't March, realize you were... Okay. Mid-March. It's actually March... March. So March 17th is okay. St. Patrick's Day, and it's... Um, I think official official is like the 15th. But if we get that far, I'm just going to bind our legs together yeah, and say, you just got to hold on for two more days. Because yeah. I just, I already have the image of him being like six or seven. I'm bringing him to New York for his birthday and saying, look what they put on for you. Uh, yes. Look at this Patrick's this Day. Can you believe great. that? Isn't this amazing? <laughs> uh, well, good luck. Good luck to her. And it's a boy. Oh, I don't know. You don't know. I, okay. I keep saying he. Yes, yes, yes. But we, but we for this one, we, we didn't surprise. Find we're gonna we're gonna I love wait it. for it. I did surprise for all three. Oh, good. The best. I didn't on number one, but uh, on number two, I'll, I'll try. We actually have the result. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, know yeah. it's in a, it's in our home safe, and there's been a few Saturdays where I'm close to opening it, but there's only so many surprises in there. There you go. And that moment when they come out and they actually say it's a boy or girl. Well, I had two boys, and then we had the girl, and I would have bet my life that the third would have been a boy. Right. So the feeling that I had when they said it's a girl. Amazing. I will. I will live with that feeling and, and hold oh, on to that forever. You sold it so, to me. I'm yes. you know, okay. okay, good. Thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate Safe Travels Home. The great John Cavanaugh, what an honor it is to have him back in studio after all these years. Golly, I think uh, eight years since your last time in oh here. My God. So it's been quite a while. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.